the willingness to be opened up by a joke and to find yourself implicated by the joke, I think is a way of challenging the social norms. The extraordinary thing about football for me, you know, is the lived experience of the, the history of a team and how that relates to identity, to family, to who you are. The decision to live or to die mm -hmm. can be a rationally chosen decision. And I love how you talk about, for example, how our conceptual apparatus for suicide is outdated and that maybe the focus should be on system change instead of very much labeling things as, as mental illness. The main task of philosophy is, is to prepare us for death. I mean, just just to to come back to a or to link this to a different form of entertainment, which which you write about. I think, first of all, I I really I really enjoy the way that you speak about everyday everyday things like comedy or music or or football. Speak and and speaking of football, you you defend football, and I was wonder and and that is in light of. For example, the fact that it's sometimes seen as a hooligans game. So, so football is, 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 as I understand it, because sometimes blamed for encouraging antisocial behavior. And I, I know you recognize these problems. I was, I was wondering if you could briefly summarize your, your stance on, on this. Uh, on the beautiful game. It's, um, on the beautiful game. Yeah, precisely. It, it's, I think that, um, kind of everything that I want to be true philosophically is really only true of uh, of football i mean you know i think so, so the book i wrote on football it's a short book um it's it was really funny how much i was able to get in it about space time the relationship between the individual and the collective history mm. and so on and so forth it's kind of um it's an extraordinary phenomenon um, and, and it's again, like again, like like humor, if you like. The um, the great thing about football is you can't feel good about it. It is a it's a completely compromised um, form of life, form of entertainment, sport. That the um, you know you can support your team, love the way a certain team plays, but the whole thing is made possible by you know the dark movements of of money and now sports washing and now state ownership of, of football teams like Newcastle United and um, others and Manchester City in a way. And, um, and it's both at the same time. So there's a, there's a beauty to it and there's a, there's a horror and it's those two things mm -hmm. at once that interest me. So I think it's, it's um, so football, I think is a way of yeah experiencing that, that deep contradiction between the, the form of football, which is association, you know, and some people have said is a kind of socialism. And there's a whole long tradition of that on the one hand. And on the other hand, the kind of material uh, content of football, what makes it possible, which is which is money, which is which is capital. And to be a fan is to to experience both. And um, I think it's, you know, it's a it, it, it's it's a. It's a fantastic, um, again, invitation to thinking. Because if you can get people to, uh, you know, think of this, you, you, you love football, you, people have got this extraordinary levels of knowledge about football, and then to invite them to think about those things a little bit further, and a bit more philosophically, um, it's quite easy to do. Because it's, you know, that's kind of part of my... I'm mean, sorry, sorry to, to interrupt, but could you give us an example, just because someone might not really be familiar with, with your stance, and an example of how you might take an ordinary football situation and really put a philosophical spin on it? Right. So the, um, yeah, for example, um, okay, time. Um, philosophers have been arguing for the last hundred years about the is time linear uh, or is time something else? So philosophers like Bergson and uh, then Heidegger have said, well, there is this linear idea of time, time as a, a, an unending sequence of nows. It's 
present, then it's not yet no longer present, it's the past or it's the present to come. And this is a sort of linear understanding of time, a series of nows. And with a, a, a football game, you have that, you know, you have the 90 minutes of the game lined up. On the other hand, the experience of time in relation to the game changes. You can actually feel time slow down and speed up when you're, when you're watching a game. Uh, if your team is uh, a goal up and you want the, the, the game to finish, your time feels incredibly slow. If you're in the opposite position, time feels incredibly fast. So the experience of time as a, as a nonlinear, almost ecstatic, uh, lived experience of time, which the phenomenological tradition has been trying to argue for, you can see that in... Um, in football and also space that, you know, um, what is it to, what is it to really, uh, what is it, what is it really to occupy a lived idea of space, not an objective three dimensional kind of geometrical idea of space, but space as we encounter it in the everyday world. And, uh, you know, the footballers are just interpreters of space, right? They're people that can, open space, who can move in a certain way and create space. Or there's a great line about the um, the German false nine, Thomas Muller, who is referred to as the, uh, the Raumdeuter, like the space interpreter. And so the points that philosophers, certainly from the traditions that I'm closest to, have been trying to make about space and time, you can, you can see and show in relationship to a football game. And there's, lo- there's lots more mm. we can say as well. Another one for me... Um... I'm going to be slightly pretentious here, so I apologize to my listeners, but um, is in Mariology. So it's the philosophy of the relations of holes to their parts, how a, a few things make up a thing, like what makes up a bicycle. And I think there's a really interesting question there um, about what makes up a team. And that's one of the crit- critiques of football is like, oh, you know, it's so superficial that you support this team, but they've changed over the years and they're not the same team as they were anymore. Um and I was wondering how you would, what what your Mariology of a, of a football team would be, and what you think persists. Right, it, it, this is it's, it's an interesting question because you've got the, I mean, the holes and parts example now would be something like you know Chelsea has spent a billion pounds or whatever on all these parts, but they can't make it into a hole. Right, it's just a bunch of individuals who are not functioning as a team. So a team has to work as a as a team, as a mobile matrix of uh of of individuals who function as a coherent whole which is continually moving continually reacting to what the other team is doing and um the um and the, the extraordinary thing about football for for me you know is the um that those parts can change you can get new players from wherever but you can still integrate them into the whole of a team and integrate that team into a lived experience of the the history of of a team and how that relates to to identity to family to who you are so in my case my family are from liverpool my team is liverpool football club and really the only if i think about what does what is my connection my what is my connection to the past my real lived connection with the past is through that team it was a team that my my grandmother supported my father was passionate about and i've contaminated my son with the same <laughs> the same thing so he's a he's a passionate liverpool fan and he he, he wants to he wants to support other teams but i didn't let him it's a bit a bit, you know, a bit cruel when he was nine years old, but he thanks me for it now, I suppose. But the point is that there you have, you know, an individual life, in this case mine, where where things are unified by a hundred years of support for this team and what this team means in relationship to a place, that place being Liverpool. And that's also something which has the possibility of a future, that my son will go on supporting Liverpool after I'm I'm dead. I mean, what can you, what do you bequeath? I mean, what do you, what, what, what can you inherit? I mean, I think, after, after you're dead or, or more importantly, after Klopp leaves. After Klopp leaves, yeah. Well, 
Klopp, Klopp, Klopp has understood the the nature of the connection between that team and the city and the kind of uh, I feel like the fantasy of it. It's he's he he understands that and he he's treated people well. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry to see him go. And and Klopp, you know, another thing I do in the book is I try and talk about Klopp as a uh, Klopp as a Heideggerian because he's you know he's from he's from that you know. He's from southern Germany. He's got not not a million miles away, and in a sense, what Klopp is trying to do with with uh, with, with 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 football is is to produce a kind of uh, to produce what he calls moments, instants of of ecstasy. Uh, that's a very kind of Heideggerian approach, and and to and to live that and to live that uh, collectively, um, you know, and that's that's so. I think the and also the the strange thing about where we are in in the world is that you know Britain used to be known for different things you know it used to be known at being good at music but now it's really football's the football's the prime cultural product of international product of of Britain and of course yeah. it's by people who are not who are not English which is even better so it, there is a kind of I wouldn't say cosmopolitanism. I don't like that. But there's a there's a you know people have a different understanding of geography because of the teams that they support. And of course there's xenophobia. Of course there's racism. And of course there's all of that. But still, it's um, it's one of the few areas of human life where I feel, despite everything, vaguely hopeful. And also, it's a way of connecting mm-hmm. with people. You know, I can connect with people. You know, I, I wear my Liverpool gear in my neighbourhood, and and you see a you know. Someone says, "Oh, you're a Liverpool fan." Well, my neighbourhood is a big Arabic neighbourhood, so uh, if you're wearing it, people will point at you and go Salah, and they will talk about Mohammed Salah because they're from Yemen or from uh, Sudan, and they so and it so it starts conversations, and it's um, mm. and and also it's it's a, a sphere where um, everyone is an expert. I'm quite interested in those areas where everyone's an expert: humour, football, music. It's interesting what you say about the geography because I'm um, nominally a Liverpool f- football fan as well because my dad's a scouser. Um, and I do feel sort of like this connection to Liverpool. Yeah. Even though I've only been a few times and when I was younger. But um, yeah, the anecdote you gave about forcing your son to be a Liverpool football fan. I grew up near the Chelsea training grounds. Um, and so when I was younger, I was a Chelsea fan. Right. And my dad, I'd ask him for Chelsea kit. And you, you said the exact same anecdote in your book, which I found funny. I'd ask him for a Chelsea kit, and for Christmas I got a Liverpool kit. That's and right. eventually it worked. <laughs> That's why it did. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, you know, we should, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always in the conversion business when it comes to Liverpool. I'm always trying to, you know, when friends of mine, they are kids, they're interested in football, I sort of go over there, show them games, buy them memorabilia, and say, you know, come on board, join the church. It's great. But um, it's a feeling of um, connection to something which is which is deep and which is um, yeah. I mean, it's so I'm pleased you're a local fan. Yeah. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the episode. I just wanted to drop you in a word from our sponsor, Manscaped. You can use the discount code Loaf to get your discount because even a lion needs to tame its mane. Get the performance package 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped now. Stay fresh with no cuts so that your baguette leaves no crumbs.